Okay, today we're having a quick look. Um, I mentioned in the video I did probably about six months ago on um, Cayman filters that I look at in another few libraries. I finally got around to having a quick look at one. I want to keep this short. Um, I'm looking at the KFAS library. It's a lot more powerful than the inbuilt structural library, but I'm just doing the same sort of thing that I did with R CRAN basic struct um, state space model library. Um, I'm running just a state space um, Gaussian model, same as that. Um, now, I'm doing it from the KFAS AS library and hopefully I'll get to the DLM library and maybe the Mars one later, although Mars is not directly came in filter. It, it is, but it's a Bayesian approach to it, I believe. Anyway, I'm trying to keep this short, so we'll get on with it. Now, these are the load libraries. There's the KFAS library, the time series library. Um, I'm not sure why I loaded the RMetrix time series library. It's not needed. Zoo and QuantMod uh, were needed for the original source I used. I used in um, uh, Bear Cave it's an old blog from about 2003. Um, it's really helpful, but unfortunately, uh, that was when I was very young, and it was still S plus. And um, his libraries, the library has changed, and it no longer functions the way he designed it in his blog. Um, it's still up there. It gave me the impetus to do this, although I had to jettison nearly everything that he did. Um, I should look at his name. Uh, but he has a very good thing on the uh, Hearst thing, as well, on the Hearst exponent as well, which I discussed just the other day. He found exactly the same as me, but I won't discuss that here. Um, and he also found the same as me, which I mentioned in my first video on uh, Cayman and Smoothing. And he thought that the error was in his approach to using the Cayman filter. No, it's not. Um, he should have realised from his Hearst exponent uh, exploration that basically nearly all share market data is random. It only has occasionally mildly persistent trends, but it's very regress it regresses back to the mean very often. And from that, the Cayman filter is not much better with most share market data than merely a um, you know, a naive model which just uses the last prediction as the best prediction because of slight autocorrelation. Uh, anyway, I'll move on. We won't discuss that here. That's a deeper topic. Anyway, um, that's the libraries. I won't run them again. I, I won't run this stuff again. because I've, um, We use get symbols. We're looking to spy, start date 2021, end date 20. 10.22 because today is the 26th um, in Australia, it's the 25th in America and that really is, I think last night must have been Monday night, yeah, so um, yeah, it doesn't make much difference. And we're, est and we're selecting the closed price rather than the ad adjusted return. Um, uh, for now, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to capture the whole thing rather than the adjusted return. I wanted to capture the naked prices. And, uh, and, we, and we got the daily return there, because we're running two models, one on the closed price, one on the daily return. And the daily return of the logarithmic returns, because it's better to use than arithmetic returns, which is another topic for another day, and I've gone over it and uh, we convert them to time series library mostly just to make um, the standard um, uh, plot charts work um, with one otherwise you have to have an XY chart um, to get you know the usual stock chart you see but if it's in a time series like this, it'll show it as a time series chart. 
That's really the only reason why we convert it. And I think maybe the KFS AS library needs XTS to time series data. Anyway, um, we first run the SPI return data. As you can see, you need the SS model, fit structural. And the model we're running is a trend which is stable. We're running a Gaussian. We're not predicting any drift. And um, the list matrix is not, ex not explained, nor is the Hessian matrix explained. We're going to fit it here. We have no initials. We're letting it completely fit it. And that is the output. And then we plot it. Now we'll go down. And we do, where is it? And we do the same. Ah, uh, uh, oh, we do the same for close. Exactly the same. And funnily enough, they present pretty similar charts. Well, they've been exactly the same charts. I suppose that's not surprising, even though one's close prices and one's on daily returns. They mimic. Um, I'll explain more after we look at the charts, OK? That is the output of the two. You can see it's a, um, there's only, there is no intercept. It's a one fit model. Now move on to the charts. Uh, all right, the charts are different. That is the daily returns. That's the observations. That's the fit of a recursive fit. It's so it's almost identical a recursive fit. And the irregular fit uh, yeah, it's almost indistinguishable once again. Anyway. But you'll see um, there is a correlation of, of one period, one day. Generally there is a share market return. Then it tends to regress. And you can see it jumps around randomly, regressing marginally. It's more pronounced for the SPY because it's a whole market aggregated, the SP 500, or the whole top 500 uh, shares by uh, capital weighting. So it tends to exaggerate the uh, regression. There are some which do have trends and are not quite so pronounced. Anyway, we'll look better. I think I'm talking too much here. Um, history of the residuals. That's a histogram of the residuals. As you can see, uh, it's a very narrow histogram. And you can see nearly all the data is between about 0.2, plus, plus 2, and minus 2. And you can see there's some outliers at about minus 8 or so um, in the data we've got. And uh, there's some outliers up at about plus 7. And it approaches a normal height. And we'll quickly look at the results for the price data. That is the observation of the price data fitted. That is the recursive residuals. You can see they're significantly different to uh, the residuals for um, the daily returns. And this one tends to be a bit more smooth than the recursive. You can see there the cluster is not as big, and the cluster is not quite as big there, although the spike is bigger, which is unusual. And we'll move on. Uh, where are we? Oh, yeah. And the autocorrelation. 
Once again, we have that one day lag in prices too. And once again, slight lag, but reverse after a day back up. You can see that it jumps around again as the other one did. I don't need to go into that again. And the histogram is the same. You can see the outliers are slightly higher. In the prices, there's an outlier way out greater than minus 10. Um, not much there. Okay. Um, that's the traditional uh, smoothing model where you have the stock data and you fit the smooth Cayman filter over it. I'm still working on that. I'll get back to you in another hopefully brief video. I'm not sure how long I've taken for this. Anyway, hope you enjoy out there in video land. Um, signing off, okay?